and uh, say God is good. The rest of you go ahead and open your Bibles to the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Don't forget to watch, uh, if you have a Roku box, we are on, uh, as well as Dr. Bill, on uh, what channel are we on? Speakfaith.tv. Speakfaith.tv. How many, how many have Roku boxes? Not yet. All right. Now, Rayma, Rayma's on there. Um, we're on there. Dr. Bill's on there. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing Copeland's on there. and Yeah, Copeland's on Roku. And... Uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, and you can, what it is, it's basically, it's, it's internet down streaming television. Of course, there's lots of other stuff on there, but um, we, we're just promoting the stuff that will help you. <laughs> Amen. We're not going to promote stuff that don't help you. Praise God. But uh, I mean, Copeland's on there. Raymond's on there. Dr. Bill's on there. We're on there. And what it is, it's 24-7. You can go out there and, and watch and, and see stuff that's out there from the, from the uh, churches and stuff. So if you've got high-speed internet connection, you get a Roku box. I don't think it's not even a, it's free, isn't it? Uh, the program is free. The program. The Roku is about forty nine dollars. Oh, the box. Yeah. yeah, the box is like fifty bucks to buy the box. But after that, then then whatever's out there, that you can get this that sends that free. You can get it. Watch it on your television, so you can see uh, Dr. Bill in glorious fifty five inch high definition, ten eighty p or i whatever it is, whatever kind of box you get. Hallelujah. Followed by us, and then by, you know Raymond and so forth. So just a lot of good stuff out there. I mean, a lot of stuff that you like, kind of like watch on your computer, you can watch it on your big screen. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So as long as you have a high-speed internet connection, you can do that. Amen. So we're promoting that. Don't forget to, to download our uh, services off of um, either the website or off of iTunes, that's right. I was, was going to say YouTube. It's iTunes. We're on, uh, we, we're on YouTube too. We're on YouTube. We're on iTunes. We're on website streaming. You can video cast us. You can uh, audio cast us. You can just get us all kinds of different ways. And just a little plug. And so can you get Dr. Bill. All right. Hallelujah. We're going we're gonna to finish today our teaching on the subject of the purpose or benefits of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And we've covered a lot of ground. We've, I mean, we've been teaching on this since January. And so we're going to finish today. And so uh, when I take the pulpit again on a Sunday morning, uh, we will go to a different, well, we teach you some different stuff. And, uh, but this is going to finish today our last point. And we've been talking about the benefits, particularly the past few weeks, of praying in tongues. The benefits benefits of praying in tongues. We talked about it brings you spiritual rest, divine communication with the Father. It builds and charges yourself. Today we're going to look from Ephesians 5, 18 and 19 where it says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is, un is excess, but it be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now you understand all things in the context of what he's saying. You don't give you don't give thanks to God for a bullet through the head, or an arrow through your chest, or a um, you know car wreck where you lose your legs. You don't thank God for those things. That's not what you thank God for. He's talking in the context of what he's talking about of, of making melody in your heart, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. So thanks, submitting yourself to the Lord, giving thanks to God for all things in those context of walking with the Lord, His blessings upon your life. You don't thank God for evil. That's just not biblical. That's, that's, that's taking something out of its setting and making it, saying something, making it say something it didn't say. You know, you know, all things work together for our good to them that love God and call according to His purpose. Well, take that in context of the Bible. What all things were? The blessings of the Lord, the Word of God, God working in your life. You know, your wife getting uh, murdered by somebody doesn't work for your good. Now, God can, can turn a bad situation and make better out of it, but, you know, bad things do not work for your good. They're not good for you. You know, if you go back and you study the book of Genesis, we have that established in the very beginning. Remember, remember when Satan came to um, uh, Adam and Eve in the garden and said to them, you know, that if you eat the fruit of the tree, you'll be like God's, but knowing both good and evil. But remember, understand this, the knowledge of good and evil wasn't good. Having the knowledge of good and evil was not good. So we don't, we don't, we don't promote that. I don't, I don't think if we study the scriptures in full context, 
You know, of course, if you take that out of its setting, give thanks God for all things, just take that out of its setting, take that out of the context of the Bible, then, then we're supposed to thank God that, you know, our house burned down and our wife and kids got burned up in it. We're supposed to go thank God for that. Well, that's not biblical because God didn't do it. You have to take it within the context of the statements that are being made and what's being said. He's talking about redeeming times, be not unwise, but understanding. Don't be drunk with wine, be filled with the Spirit. Uh, speaking to yourselves in Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, giving melody in your heart unto the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto the Lord, submitting yourselves unto one another. He's talking about in the context of a relationship with the Lord. We're thanking God for all things that He does for us. He does all things well. He blesses our lives. He leads us into understanding. Surely goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. We thank God for those things. I don't thank God when evil happens. The only thing I would thank God for in the midst of evil is that God, my God is my deliverer. He brings me out with a strong arm. He's my fortress. He's my strong tower. He's my answer. Praise God. That's what I thank God for. I don't thank Him for the event. I don't thank Him for the bad. Hello. All right. Now, so let's look here. He says here, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. The word excess comes from a, 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 a satia. Now, satia. <laughs> is, is the root word of, uh, that comes out of soteria, um, which is to be salvation. So a sotia is an unsavingness. Being drunk is unsavingness. I, was, I just happened to be, as I was doing some study this week, uh, kind of clicked on a link in my, in, in my PC study Bible on wine, and I'll tell you what, there's a bunch in the Bible about drinking, and none of it's favorable. Hello? There's a bunch of scriptures that talk about drinking, and none of them say it's a good thing. None of them, the only thing that we have in the Bible that talks about drinking in a positive light is, drink no, Lord, no longer water but a little wine for thy stomach's sake, for thy often infirmities, for medicinal purposes. To tip from, from Paul to Timothy. Everything else talks about that it's a mocker, that it's strong drink, causes problems, causes revelry. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. I mean, it just talks about they're captured by, you know, going go to folly. I mean, it's just a bunch of stuff that's, that's not promoting the drinking of wine. Hello. Yeah, you got churches that put on their websites, we drink wine with our dinner. Why? So people who, who, who think they can just live like they want to live want to come. Well, that's not, that's not the purpose. The Bible's a lot of warnings, you know. If you're going to do that, you may as well put it there. And, and we, have, we have strip dancers in church, too. Because you know, the Bible talks about in, in Proverbs about, the, you know, the lips of a strange woman lead, leading you astray and leading you down the wrong path. If you're going to say that, you know, it's okay to drink wine, you may as well have the strip dancer. I just love it when I just go right for the jugular. You know, just don't mess around. Let's just don't play with it. Let's just do it like it is. All right. So he says, where, he says, don't be drunk with wine. Wherein is unsavingness? You see, you know, uh, let me say this. People, <coughs> people drink. And, this, and, and I know they say, you know, well, in European culture, they just drink a little bit. Da, da, da. They get just as drunk as everybody. They're out drinking wine at, at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and Bob has something about to say about he who drinks in the morning, too. Anyway, just saying. <laughs> You go down there, Psalms LSA, and all the French people are out not working because they're in a socialist economy, drinking wine. Drinking, you know, uh, cognac. And they're drinking all kinds of stuff. All up down the Psalms LSA, they just sit there. They're out in the middle of the day drinking all the time. You know? And you wonder why their society can't produce much. That's all they think about. I mean, you, know, got, you got Hispanic cultures, Latino cultures that take siestas just so they can drink and go take a nap. Hello. It's unsavingness. There is something about the mindset that well, I have to drink to get relaxed. I have to drink to, 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 be, to be calm. When all along we're missing the mark. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. What is it? Drinking has become the carnal substitute for the spiritual activity of being filled with the Holy Ghost. And staying full of the Holy Ghost. Are you here or are you going home? See, the, and listen, this is not nothing new. It's not like it just happened the last hundred years, you know, since we got in America and we got television, they can promote beer whatever, or wine or whatever with every single activity there is in the world. You can't go to a ball game without people drinking beer right and left. You know, they even now got, they cut off the drinking in the seventh inning or in the th fourth quarter in, 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 in football games and baseball games because the people are just so drunk, you know. And they, then they show up and they show up and start tailgating at whatever time. And all they do is, you ride by. How many of you have ever been to a professional athletic event of some kind? 
Now, me and Nathan went to, we went to, um, we went to a basketball game, and then Jane and I went down and got to go see the Carolina Panther game one, on a Monday night. And uh, as you walk from wherever you park to the stadiums or to the Coliseum, people are tailgating. And I didn't go by one single tailgate party that had a Coca-Cola. Not one. What did they have? They had every kind of beer you could think of. Outside the stadium, everybody's in line, they don't open it up until a certain time. They got vendors out there. What are they selling? They're selling beer. You don't see them selling coke, they're selling beer. What, what is it? It's a cultural mindset, and it's a carnal mindset. It's a humanist. It's humanist. It's man, man doesn't care about God. He's, not, he's, he's no longer in touch with, with his relationship with God. They, they, they just want to appease the flesh and live in unsavingness when there is something greater that God has for humanity, and that is to be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. To stay full of God's presence, glory to God. This other stuff just waters down your senses. It, you know, well, it calms my nerves. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost to calm your nerves. Are you here? We, um, we, we had to go to Charlotte this weekend. Nathan's state tournament was this weekend. And so we stayed in the hotel. We got next one. We had a, we had a full continental, not even continental, just a full buffet breakfast. And uh, the waiter came out to one of the tables nearest, and these ladies came out. And he, apparently he had told them some club to go to the night before. And, and he asked them, they needed, they, he starts talking about some kind of drinks they needed to kind of help, you know, because I, I know you need this because y'all went out last night. Wow. Yeah, on the town, you know, drinking. That's, oh, that's so cool. You wake up the next morning, you feel like you've been run over by a tractor trailer. I can tell you, you pray in the Holy Ghost all night, you won't feel like you got run over by a tractor trailer the next morning. Yeah. I'll just guarantee it. Yeah. You'll be energized. Hallelujah. You'll be renewed. You'll be refreshed. You'll be strengthened. The world offers us, but here's the one thing. Whenever the world offers a substitute to the flesh for that which God has offered to the Spirit, you always pay the price in the flesh. And you get no benefit in the spirit. But when you follow out to the spiritual side and follow out your God, not only does your spirit get blessed and refreshed, your flesh will get blessed and refreshed. It'll bless your whole being, glory to God. I said it'll bless your whole being, praise God. Amen. Well, that went over big. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I know we're living in a society today that everybody just wants to talk about that it's okay to drink. And they have seminars for churches on how you can drink and not be, not, not be a sinner and, you know, whatever. I, like, I don't care. I don't care if you can prove to me that, it's, that God won't send you to hell because you drink. I'm telling you, the Bible is telling us that there's something greater than a bottle of cognac. There's something greater than a glass of Chardonnay. There's something greater than some champagne. There's something greater than some Jack Daniels. There's something greater than all the different drinks out there, the mixed drinks, the Bloody Marys, you know I mean, the margaritas, whatever else you can come up with. There's something greater, glory to God. There's something that'll bless your human spirit, praise God. That'll bring you into communion with the Most High God, praise God. That'll cause your spirit to connect with Him and be in spiritual fellowship with him in a way that you can't get any other way, praise God, than being full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, I don't believe in God. Well, you got a problem anyway, buddy. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Christians. I'm talking to believers. There's nothing you're ever going to get out of any of those drinks that will satisfy what the Holy Ghost in your inner man will satisfy, praise God. Amen. And the peace that the Holy Ghost will bring, and the comfort that He will bring, and the encouragement that He will bring, and the strength, hallelujah, praise God. I can tell you all the drinking will do for you to enter your pocketbook and give you a hangover, and in some cases put you in positions of doing stuff you didn't even know you did. Thank you for your enthusiasm. And act like a fool in the process. Going to a restaurant, you get around. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. <clears throat> get around some of these. We, got, we were somewhere recently. These, la these ladies were near us, and they were laughing like hyenas. And he's like, oh, Lord. Give you, I mean, just pierce your ear, you know. I don't want to be around people who've been drinking a bunch. I don't enjoy it. Amen? Brag about how much you drink all over on Facebook. Woo! You think. Ric Flair, the, the Ric Flair sound is way gone. All right? Yeah. Ho! Oh, woo! Yeah. Had some commercial with him, and he's like, he's like, he's like three days older than dirt, trying to look like he's 25. 
you know? I think he was doing the North Carolina lottery or something. It's like, <laughs> people, if you're not old enough, you don't even know who he is. Who's the old guy with the robe on who's making that weird sound? All right. But be not drunk with wine, where is unsavingness, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, the Greek actually says here, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tense. It's, not, it's, it's just more of a tense than it is words. It is a tense of the word <coughs> filled. And so it says, be ye filled. Really, in the Greek, that phrase is be ye being. It's a continual sense in the Greek. Constantly be filled. Now, listen, now I, had, I had a grandfather. And the joke about my grandfather was, now he was in the Old Navy. He was Old Salt. Uh, he, he worked, um, he, was a, um, he was a second machinist mate in the boiler room, crossed the equator like 27 times. You know, they get, every time, if you're in the Navy and you're on the ship, you cross the equator, you get a certificate every time you cross the equator. That's just something they do. And um, he retired after 27 years in the Navy. And uh, now if you, don't, if you don't know anything about the Navy, you don't know anything about the military, they have what they call commissaries where there's reduced price foods and groceries and stuff. That would your, even after you retire with your ID, you go in and you buy the foods and stuff. It's just a, it's a, it's a benefit of having served the country, and I, and I, I think that's great. But they, they sell beer. They call it black label beer. And apparently, from what I understand from other people, that's just some nasty, cheap, drunk beer. All right. Granddaddy kept cases on the porch. He kept cases on the porch and the ice chest full of beer on ice. And we had kind of a joke about Granddaddy was he was pickled. He wasn't drunk. He was pickled. Because <laughs> he'd get up in the morning and start drinking. He just drank it all day long. And when my grandmama starts fussing, he'd just turn up, turn his hearing aid down, and he'd just keep drinking. <laughs> I mean, he'd turn on Westerns, she'd start fussing about it, he'd turn the volume down on it, he'd turn the volume down on her ear, you're thinking, just drink. And she'd stand over there and fuss, and he'd, oh, he's pickled. I'm telling you, that, don't take this wrong, but when, when he passed away, they didn't have to embalm him. <laughs> he was already preserved. Oh, my. Uh, you know, <laughs> oh me! Last time we got to go see him before he died, uh, the kids were all with us, and uh, I was the first time he ever opened up, and talked about um, his his career in the military and stuff. He went in World War II as a CB, came out two years, went back in, and then stayed in until '72. So from four, so he he did short he did duty in Korea, Vietnam, uh, World War II, all over the place. Hallelujah! And um, they had offshore duty in Vietnam. They fought in. Korea. Korea, um, and, uh, but then when he retired, he just got pickled. He may have been pickled on the ship, you know. Uh, you know there's just, it, but it, what, what does that rob you of? What does that, you know, I kind of, I like to tell that story because it's just funny to me, you know. But, but what, what does that rob you of? I mean, you're, you're not in touch with anything. You're, you're dulled to everything around you. Hello? Your life is just taking in and consuming alcoholic beverages. I, I, had, I had my dad tell one of my relatives one time, he said, what would you think if we went out somewhere and, and to the, for spend a day fishing and I brought a cooler of, uh, of, of 25 Cokes and I drank all of them that day? Because people drink, drink 20, 25 beers while they're fishing. You know, just drink and drink and drink. He said, what do you think about just drank beer as much as you drank, I mean, Coke as much as you drank beer? You become, you become dull. You become, you know, listless. You, your flesh is inebriated. You become disconnected. And see, Satan wants us to become disconnected. Wants us to not feel. Wants us to not be in touch. Wants us to be where our flesh, you know, you know our flesh is just kind of controlled by something else. Whereas God says, but be being filled. See, now I was going to say, you got people who stay full of alcohol, and they can't function like they should. They're suppre they're, they're, their inner man is suppressed. It's not walking where it should walk. Where God has something for us that gives our inner man the supremacy, that gives our inner man the ascendancy, that causes us to be in communion with him, that causes us to be able to guide and lead our flesh in a way that's profitable, that you're not disconnected from the world, but you're, you're connected with it by the Spirit of God and what God has. Oh, my. Thank God that we, that we can have be filled with the Spirit. Now, this, our point of this is praying in the Holy Ghost maintains our spiritual strength. 
maintains our spiritual strength. It's not a robber, it's an enhancer. It's not a destroyer, it's a blesser by praying in the Spirit. He says, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart unto the Lord. Look with me, if you will, into the um, uh, Psalm 63. I'll tell you, as you begin to worship the Lord and magnify God and pray and commune with God out of your spirit, strength will come. Maintain your spiritual strength. We've got to maintain our spiritual strength. Your, your spirit man can't become inebriated and weak. Are you here? Where he can't function. Psalm 63, verse 3, because thy loving kindness is better than life. I'm going to tell you something. People look for ways to escape life because they're not spending time with God. Because if you spend time with God, you'll find out His loving kindness is better than life. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about the God of human theology. God's going to get you for that. God did that to you. You know, some bad things happen and just, you know, God intended that. You know, something good doesn't happen. It wasn't meant to be. Those aren't God's positions. He says, Thy loving kindness is better than life. Oh, praise God. Oh, the loving kindnesses of God himself is better than breathing, praise God. Man, oh man, oh man. And because of that, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied with morrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. We used to have a little chorus we used to sing. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. <coughs> bless thee. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Nathan, are you laughing? Yep, he put his head down. I knew he was. I knew he was. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thy, lo thy loving kindness. See, we got, we got a mindset about God that God's angry with us. God's going to get us for that. God's waiting, uh, waiting to, to, he's just waiting for the opportunity to zap you. Which leads me to an envision I had yesterday. Not a vision. Uh, at the ball game yesterday, Nathan's team was in a really, really close situation. They needed, they needed this particular thing. Uh, Got to be safe. He was safe. Umpire called him out. He's safe that far. The coach went out in the field. I can still see, I'll see him for the rest of my life. He was like a pogo stick jumping at the umpire. And it didn't take the umpire two seconds. Tossed him. He'd been looking for the opportunity from the day before. Just any, just you could tell it. The way he kept treating our team and stuff. He was waiting for the opportunity to throw the coach out. And the first thing he did, he could do it with, he threw him. He tossed him, which was not good because we didn't have anybody to take his place. <laughs> so it, it, it was not good. We get that mindset about God. We get that mind, I can, this is the way the world, if I could show you this umpire and how he acted yesterday, that is the vision that the world has of God oftentimes. Just looking for the opportunity to toss you. And that's not God. I said, that's not God. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He sent Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians um, chapter uh, 2 that even while we were dead in our trespasses and sins, he came and died for us. <coughs> Amen? He reconciled us while we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Why would he be looking for the opportunity to toss you? He's not looking to get you. And so we need to get a revelation because it maintains spiritual strength as we worship the Lord and pray in the Spirit and spend time in His presence that His loving kindness is better than life. I said His loving kindness is better than life. Amen? Then you're going to bless the Lord. You're going to praise Him and honor Him. What is, what is that doing? That's filling you, keeping you full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? I'll tell you, I know people, I know Christians who, who, who just who, who kind of fall away from God, drink all the time, get drunk, do all kinds of stuff, and I'm telling you, they, what, what the problem is, is they did not stay in a place where they had a revelation that God's loving kindness is better than life. 
You could, if, you, if you get to where you begin to understand that his loving kindness is better than life and you worship and praise him. I, I say this, we, we, uh, somebody posted it, uh, Larry put it on Nuggets of Truth the other week, something I said a couple, three years ago, you can't pray in tongues and commit adultery at the same time. No. You're saying you can't do it. Hello? Y'all hear you gone home. It just, it just won't work. All right? So, thy loving kindness is better than life. Amen. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands in thy name. And then he says, it's because you do that, your soul you will be satisfied. There's, the world's always offering stuff to, to appease or to mask the symptoms of dissatisfaction. Whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whether it's illicit sex, whether it's whatever it is. It is all a substitute, it's really a mask to the human soul that is suffering from dissatisfaction. But God has given us a means whereby we can be satisfied. Listen, not just in your spirit, but in your soul. You can have a satisfaction from God that appeases all your being. Where it's not a mask, it's the cure. Now, how many, how, and, and maybe you've dealt with this in your own families. Over the years, we've dealt with it as a church with different ones coming into the church and so forth. But we, a lot of times, cancer patients get to a certain place. There's no cure for them unless you know, they just they, they, they can't be helped. We, we, if we're praying with them, we can't get them to see by, from the Word of God. Now, and we've had numerous people over the years. Not to say numerous. We've had several people come in over the years. Sometimes we had one, one lady came in a number of years ago, and uh, she was in stage four. And um, she waited till I mean, it was, she didn't have any time. I was hoping for a miracle. You know, and sometimes, you know, you can, sometimes you can't. You, you know, if you don't get the gifts of the Spirit, you can't get them, in, or if you can't get them in faith, you, there's nothing you can do. In this particular case, we'd go see her in her home and, you know, and get, bring books and tapes and say, look, you, you've, got, you've got to feed on the Word. We can't, we can't do this all. We can't live with you 24-7. You, you've got to do something for yourself. Come back the next week, books are in the same place. Television was on. I'm going to tell you something. If you're dying of cancer, as the world turns, it's not going to help you. I'm just telling you. Are y'all here? Y'all going home? Watching Ellen will definitely not help you. Or the view, or any of that. None of that stuff's going to help you if you're dying. It ain't going to help you if you're living, actually. <laughs> just be honest. Neither is Dr. Phil. Anyway, that stuff's just not, not going to help you. And then, if you wait, and, then, and then you get to go tonight and watch Snooky. That's a real blessing. Anyway, some things you're just glad when they go off television. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, but, you know, if you can't help them and they don't want to help themselves, then they just end up going home. But I, I've seen cancer patients <clears throat> a lot of times in the last stages. Doctors can't do anything, so they, what do they do? They give them morphine. They start giving them morphine. What for? To mask the pain. They're not curing them. They're not doing anything but masking the pain so they can't feel it. And the world does that to the dissatisfied soul. Your cure is not the alcohol. Your cure is not the drugs. Your cure is not the illicit sex. Your cure is not appeasing the flesh and doing things with the flesh and all that kind of stuff just to get the so what to to basically mask the symptom of lack of spiritual strength that will only come from being full of the Holy Ghost. And if you'll get full of the Holy Ghost, you won't ma it won't mask anything. It is the cure. It is the answer to the dissatisfied soul. No, here y'all go home. It'll bring it'll bring into your heart a peace and a tranquility. It'll bring it'll bring a satisfaction to the soul that you won't need to cover up anymore. 
Um, you know, have you ever seen, you know, people who, are, who, are, who, who live in, a lot of terms we use bipolar, schizophrenic, uh, lunatic, um, you know, crazy, whatever. We, give them, we put them all kinds of drugs. Put them on Valium. Put them on uh, Lithium. You know, they're bipolar. You know, we're going to diagnose Lithium for them. You know? and, and all they do with these people is they end up masking the problem. Basically, they suppress them so much that they're barely functioning. And a lot of the people who get up, end up on those drugs stop taking them because they hate the way that they're so suppressed. They're not being cured. They're just being suppressed. About 90% of the kids they put on for attention definite hyperactivity disorder, which is bull for selling drugs to kids. <clears throat> kids are kids. Okay, I get it. Stop giving them red dye number five. <laughs> Don't send them out with a juicy juice red dye number five drink in the morning. I get, that's okay. Send them with real orange juice. You know, give them some real stuff. But other than that, 90% of that mess is just garbage. Just people prescribing medicines and the kids go to school and they're all, you know, lethargic and, uh, you know, because they're drugged. The Christian answer is not, you know, for the Christian. Your answer is not to use all the other things to suppress your dissatisfaction. It is to find the answer to it. And the answer to your dissatisfaction is being full of the Holy Ghost. When you, when you say, thy loving kindness is better than life, oh, thus, thus I will, my lips shall praise thee. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Amen. My, and then he says, my soul shall be satisfied. Oh, praise God. Then he goes on and says, listen what happens after that. You'll get the marrow and the fatness. With my mouth shall I praise thee with what? Joyful lips. Now, that's one thing to offer the sacrifice of praise. Amen. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Amen. Woo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sacrifice praise. I don't feel like it. Ever been there? Don't feel like it. Don't want to. Hallelujah. Slap me to make me. I mean, you know, I've seen some people come in and go, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, they just, I mean, they, it's Eeyore led worship. E worship with Eeyore. Amen. I mean, the tail, the donkey's on the wrong side of the CD cover and everything. I mean, you know. Eeyore worship. I mean, they're just doing everything they can. They're not, well, actually, sometimes they're not even doing everything they can. They're just kind of going through the motions. I got joy. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river in my soul. Man, I wish that was true. I got peace. I, you know, are you here? That's, that's the, sometimes we have to make a sacrifice of praise to get us, prime the pump to get over there. But I'm telling you something, when, when, when you're satisfied with morrow and fatness, praise God, and your lips are praising God with joyful lips, amen. You can tell the difference. I can come out here, I, I, I'm, I'm going to film y'all one day. I'm going to start putting cameras up on the platform and letting y'all see yourself on the screen. Amen. Because sometimes it's like, we're up, here, we're up here singing, holy is the Lord, and everybody's going, holy, holy. Holy, holy is the Lord. My, hello, my name's Johnny Cash. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Anyway. Joyful lips come from somewhere greater. <coughs> the one thing I have noticed about drunk people is they're always laughing, making a bunch of noise. Hello. Think, now think about that. Start getting your spirit full of God. Joyful lips come out of you. Amen. Isaiah 55 and 1 says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Now you understand a lot of times the Old Testament word, the Old Testament word for wine was unfermented. They used the same word for grape juice as they did for wine. There wasn't two different words. You had to take it in context. Here it says, buy the wine and mil uh, milk without money and without price. What's it? If you're thirsty, I can tell you, and it says, listen, the Bible refers to the Holy Ghost as new wine. 
Amen. He says, come and drink. Come to the Lord until you'll maintain your spiritual strength. When you come to the Lord and drink, he says, without price, without money. You can't buy this. And in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Amen. Glory to God. Zechariah 9, 15 through 17 says, The Lord of hosts shall defend them, and they shall devour and subdue with sling stones. They shall drink and make a noise as through wine, and they shall be filled like bowels as the corners of the altar. And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of crown lifted up as an incense upon his land. For how great is his goodness, and how great is his beauty. Hallelujah. Amen. And then we go down to Luke 11, 13. If you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. Amen. Being full of the Holy Ghost maintains spiritual strength. Acts 2.13. Let's go over to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. It is time we stay, get full of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, get full of the Holy Ghost. Stop, stop looking for ways uh, to, to satisfy our soul outside the Holy Ghost. Really, really, you understand what you're doing, don't you? You're, you're suppressing your dissatisfaction. You're covering yourself with something that makes you feel good for the moment. Amen. But in the morning, you're going to be right back where you were. People do things all the time. And the next day is the day of regret. The next day is the day of regret. They wish they hadn't have done it. We had a, um, I'm going to tell you a story. I've told this before, but for those who haven't heard it before, back in our home church there was a guy there, and, and I, we knew him, um, and we knew his wife. And, um, you know, he had gotten saved and turned on to the Lord. They were serving the Lord. And, uh, and he had been, you know, hooked on drugs and stuff at some point in his life. Dope smoker. Let me tell you something. Don't, you, you can't have a desire to go back to something if you never do it. Don't ever start down that road. Drugs, all addictions, all addictions have nothing but calamity in their in, in wakes of destruction in their path. And it's just not you that gets hurt. Your loved ones get hurt. Your friends get hurt. People you care about get hurt. Everybody around you gets hurt. Amen. 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 And so we, we knew this we knew this young man and he was he was in the church and had come and actually become a minister in the church. Amen. Become a minister in the church. And um, he went right, he was right down the road outside outside the church one day and, and after, you know, I don't know if he'd been to the church or whatever. Picked up this guy, guy started riding down the road, the guy offered some weed. And had had been saved, hadn't, hadn't touched it in years. But what he didn't know was in the meantime, he had gotten lethargic with his walk. Wasn't doing the things he needed. You start feeling a little down. And, for some, and he, 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 he couldn't really explain it. He, just, he said, yeah, I took it and smoked it. Felt, so, felt horrible, repented, asked God to forgive him. But he opened that door back up. And it wasn't long that he got someplace, he got offered some crack cocaine. He took one hit, and, and, and people don't understand this. Young people, old people, middle-aged people, let me tell you, there's stuff out there you just don't want to mess with. Yeah. Crack can be, now listen, here, here's how crack is. You can, some people can take it one time and never touch it again. You can be instantly addicted to it the first time you take it, or it can kill you the first time you take it. I mean, it is one of those, one of those designer drugs that uh, people, it's play, like playing Russian roulette. It's like taking a gun with a bullet in and just pulling the trigger for the high, pulling the trigger and not getting killed. Crack can be instant. The addictive, it can kill you the first time you take it. Or you might be able to do it three or four times and, not, and then, then you get addicted. It, it, every person's physical makeup is different, but I'm telling you, it's a highly, highly dangerous psychological drug. Very dangerous drug. Well, he, he took a hit and got hooked. 
the ministry of the church. Well, not long after that, all of a sudden the church starts missing all kinds of equipment. Musical equipment starts being missing. Computers start being missing. Stuff gets stolen right out of the church. So finally the pastor says, well, I've got to figure out who it is because they know somebody's got a key because the alarm system's not going off. You know, somebody with the alarm system code and with a key. So they set up security cameras and catch him. And he, the pastor's devastated. I mean, this is somebody that, you know, not, any pastor would be. You love the people. You care for them. They didn't press charges because they wanted to help him. Now, I'm going to say something. Sometimes it's just best to go and press charges. You're not helping them, not getting them help. Amen. Because this guy, it got worse for him. They didn't press charges. Uh, he was prohibited from coming back at the church and stuff, you know, you know, and that kind of thing. Well, then all of a sudden, he starts going around towns and near our town, city down there, robbing people at gunpoint. Finally went up to another, another city about on the uh, uh, north, of, uh, north of there, small little town up there, and went into a church to rob the church, and the pastor was there. He shot the pastor. And standing there playing, please pray for me, pray for me, please forgive me. Please. I'm a minister. He's telling you, I'm a minister. Shot him. And then, and then he, he leaves and runs, drives all the way back to Greenville, run, and the police chasing him, runs his car up into the, the, the road where our church was, the church that we were out of, and, and jumps out of his car, and they chase him across the lot, and he, the whole time the television cameras come, helicopters over top, and he's hollering, don't shoot me, shoot me, I'm a minister, I'm a minister. He allowed the he allowed his flesh to dictate to him what would satisfy his soul in a dark time. And we have not told the church enough. Church, your answer is not found in your flesh. Yeah. It is found in the Spirit of God, and He will not mask your problem. He will be the answer to your problem, and you're going to have to learn that. How to, are you here? And, and trust the Holy Ghost. But I'm at my darkest hour. Then you just need to go pray. And I don't want to pray. No, your flesh don't want to pray. Your flesh doesn't want to speak in tongues. Your flesh doesn't want to do anything. It wants to get drunk. Hello. I've, I've taught the Christians. <clears throat> I just rode by a store and grabbed me a six pack of long necks. What were you thinking? God, God don't mind. You know, they start talking about how it's okay to drink. Now, okay, I don't care if it's okay to drink or not. The fact is, you're substituting what you need for a fleshly response to a spiritual problem. That's right. And being full of the Holy Ghost is your answer. Right. Hello. Your friends might say, I'll, tell, I'll drink a glass of wine. I'll drink, you know, I'll, I'll drink the bottle. We'll all sit down and get drunk together, you know. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Y'all drink them. You're all happy. And, but, but I'm going to tell you, the next morning, you're going to still be right where you were. You're not going to wake up a different man or a different woman. You're not going to wake up with a dissatisfaction gone. You're not going to wake up with anything other than cotton mouth. Hello? That's where all your, the alcohol's dried out, all your body moisture, and your saliva's dried up, and it's like white cotton, and your, and your tongue's stuck to the roof. You've got to get a tongue depression to peel it off the top. Got a headache. If you can, can't even remember what you, oh, what did I do last night? <clears throat> you're not going to be better off. You're going to be worse. Whatever it is that you're using to mask the dissatisfaction, God says, be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Look at Acts chapter 2. Looking down in verse... We're going to read one verse, and then we'll jump down, okay? Verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a mighty rushing wind, and filled all the room where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. I mean, I'm sorry. And, and, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Jump down to verse um, 12. Or verse 11, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues, the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? And others mocking. Said, these men are full of new wine. They're drunk. Peter stood up and said, um, Lifted up his voice, said, We, you men of Judea, and ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my voice. These are not drunken as ye suppose. Seeing was but the third hour of the day. Well, the Jews accounted about 6 a.m. as, as the, you know, as, as the end of the beginning of morning. So the third hour, that would be about 9 o'clock in the morning. 
It's around 9 o'clock in the morning. Now, you've got to be a hardcore drunk to be nine, drunk, drunk at 9 in the morning. Granddaddy was pickled at 9, all right? That's because he was pickled from the night before. Hallelujah. Y'all not getting any joy out of that. I mean, yeah. Family just, it's what our family's funny. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, it's, it's but the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Then it shall come to pass, saith in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit. Hallelujah. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Now, here God has something. That people think, oh, they like, they're, they're drunk, they've been drinking all night. Or they're drinking, you know, Peter says, we're not drunk like you think. We have come in contact with that which God has given us that will satisfy the soul. Amen. That, will br that brings the answer to our problem. It's not an addition. Let me say something. You know this. You see, how many of you have ever seen or know, or ha or some of you, don't, you don't have to say if it's a relative or not, but you've had relatives, you've had a friend, somebody you know was alcoholic, uh, chemical dependent, something along those lines, and they would spend whatever they could get their hands on to get into more financial trouble. Hello? They're depressed because they don't have enough money, but they'll go buy a fifth of liquor and miss work for two weeks. But it's, the, it's, it's what the devil does to rob you. Are you here? Drug addicts will do anything they can to get the money to get the drugs. They don't care if they lose their job because they're on the drugs. They just got to have money to do the drugs. So it just takes them down a deeper hole. But I can tell you, you won't get fired because you prayed in tongues last night. You'll bounce into work with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hello, you'll be running like the Energizer Bunny. Boom, 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 boom. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because you're full of something. You, what, you've been built up. You've been strengthened. You're maintaining your spiritual strength. You're not depressed. You're not sad. You're not going down. You're going over. Praise God. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And he goes on preaches another sermon, praise God. But I wanted you to see something, that the Holy Ghost came on them, and it energized them. Their strength, their spiritual strength was increased and strengthened and maintained, praise God. But, you know, and you go look through the Bible, you go through the book of Acts, I'm not going to cover all the places. But time and time again, they were persecuted. They would go get together and pray and get filled with the Holy Ghost, and they'd go right back out. Amen. They didn't get together when, when they persecuted them and start singing gloom, despair, agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. That's how some Christians act. That's what they did in the Old Testament. Remember Elijah, the author of the gloom, despair song. Are you, what do we mean? Remember when Jezebel said after he, now let's think about this. <clears throat> he just called fire down out of heaven, destroyed the sacrifice, destroyed the stones, licked up all the water, killed 450 prophets single-handedly, and some little sleazy weasel. That's as nice as I can say about her. Queen Skank <laughs> goes, Tell him I'm going to kill him. And he runs off and hides in a cave. And begins to sing the gloom despair song. That's my version. And, and says, I'm, he goes, go ahead and kill me, Lord. I'm the only one that's left. That's depression. Nobody does it like me. Nobody's doing it but me. And you may as well just take me out. Why? It's amazing how you can have a spiritual victory here and the next day not be in victory. Yeah. Why? You have to maintain your spiritual strength. You could get a $1,000 check today and a, a $2,000 bill tomorrow and you'll forget that God provided yesterday. Yeah. Hello? Are y'all here? You gone home? We had a, we had an incident happen yesterday, and uh, Janie called the girls and said, "Pray," you know, and, and they start preaching to her. One of our family members was on a team bus, 
and we had the games were over. We we had stopped at Clun Conqueror Mills, uh, uh, Jamie and I, and we were eating at the Cracker Barrel. The bus went back a different direction. They went up 77 because we didn't realize that there was a race yesterday, and um, so the the coach drove up 77 to miss all the 85 traffic. Smart coach. We get a phone call from Nathan. Uh, I can't find my wallet. Because all, what's going through your mind? Baseball field, somebody stole it. I mean, you know, I can't find it. Is it, it did you stick it somewhere wrong? And all? And of course, he has three bags. He's got his baseball bag, he's got his clothes bag, and he's got a garment bag with all the uniforms in it because they got, they got 22 different combinations of uniforms. That's down from last year's of 42. Anyway, <laughs> there's panic. Because we're we're, we're going to go on a trip for his graduation. You got to have your driver's license, or you can't get on the you can't get on the ship, and you can't get your driver's license in North Carolina in less than two weeks. They don't they don't give them to you anymore when you go down there. They mail them to you two weeks later. Well, the next week's a week. <laughs> it ain't two weeks. <clears throat> so Janie called, pray, Janie is lost, you know. And so we're sitting there, and uh, we call the hotel. Let me tell you something. I've never been so glad to find out that his wallet was at a hotel. <laughs> that I had to drive 25 miles backwards to get than I was yesterday. That was like rejoicing. I did. I rejoiced when the lady says, we have it. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Girls preach. It's not lost. It's temporarily misplaced. You know, they're just preaching to us, you know, glory to God. Let me say this. Life is not as bad as you think it is. What's that, son? Just stay chill. You won't chill yesterday when you called me. <laughs> I just stay chill like me. It's all okay. He was not chilled. <clears throat> and of course, mommy, all his mama cares about for, for, for part of that moment is, did you get anything to eat? You didn't have your wallet. Did you get to eat? So, did you check it? I checked, I checked all my bags. I took everything out. I looked. It's not there. Talked to the bus driver. I said, look, you know, Nathan's lost his wallet. We got it. Where are you guys? You know, we got to figure out what to do. In the meantime, we've called the hotel. They didn't call me back. So, finally, I called back. She says, well, I called your number. She didn't write my number down right. Uh, we've got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was happy. I was happy. I was like joy. <laughs> I get to drive back and get the wallet. Hallelujah. Because well, was it in the dugout? Was it on the, did he drop it outside the dugout? Did some kid pick it up? Did somebody else at the ball game steal it? Uh, you know, all the things you can think of. And I'm trying to tell you, whatever you're facing in life, just stay full of the Holy Ghost because I can tell you this, it's not as bad as you think it is. Hello. The only thing it cost us was, you know, what, $8 in gas and 50 minutes of time. We spent more time in the car riding down the road together, which that Jane was enjoying so much at Concord Mills and stop and go traffic. Hallelujah. <laughs> but we, once we got on the interstate on 485, started down there, it was just, a, it was just a, right down there. I was probably doing 80. And then we got to see the drunk guy on the way back. <laughs> Lunatic drunk, driving all over the road. Anyway, I said that for this purpose. You can look at certain situation, and it can look like it is. There's no out. It's horrible. It's, it, there's just no fix to it. There's the answer. You have to stay spiritually strong in life to face spirit to face spiritual battles. You can't use natural means to answer them. What's going on in our country and the world right now? There's not a natural answer you could you could you could attack. You're going to have to tap into spiritual answers. As believers, we're going to overcome through the spirit, not through the flesh. Are y'all here? It's just not going to happen in the flesh. And so they came out of that upper room. Now listen, you think about this now. This is 50 days after Jesus was crucified. 10 days after his ascension. Amen. They're waiting for him to restore natural kingdom. He said, that's not going to be it. He takes off. They stand there and they say, go, you know, they go tarry and wait, get filled with the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, Peter the cusser, ear cutting off, Lord denying disciple, is out in the middle of the street preaching a sermon to all those people. Now, just 40 days before that, he cut off the guy's ear. Denied the Lord three times and finally went to cussing. Yeah. 
Hello? Think about that night. Remember the cane? He took out a sword, cut the guy's ear off. Jesus said, go get his ear. Yeah. Peter picks it up, brings it back, dirt and everything. Jesus sticks it back, so on, heals it. Yeah. That guy had, a, had an interesting night, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> so, so he goes home, honey, why you got dirt on your ear? You, you're not going to believe it. <laughs> I went to arrest this guy. He cut my ear off. The guy I arrested put it back on. And it, and look, it's, it's, it's attached. <laughs> they take Jesus away to trial. Peter's out there hiding, lying to kids, yep. little girls. And finally, somebody tried to pin yeah, I saw you with them. And blankety blank, 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 you didn't. Because he always said it was your speech betrays you. Yeah. I'll show you my speech. He, he was an old fisherman. He knew where to go. So he lied, denied, and cut off an ear. Yeah. Can't rhyme that. <laughs> Severed. Okay, well, you've come up with a word that rhymes, lied, denied. We'll have that for Peter, all right? Okay. And yet 50 days after that event, 50 days after that event, remember he went out and wept bitterly. They cried all night. I mean, all the things that happened. Jesus is raised from the dead. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost comes on them. And Peter, the, the ear-cutting off lion denier, walks out onto that balcony in front of 3,000 people and preaches a sermon that starts the church. Amen. I said amen. I'm telling you the visitation of God in your life, staying full of the Holy Ghost turns you into another man or woman that can deal with anything the devil throws your way. And you don't have to revert to the flesh. I want to close with a statement. You can either go into Canaan land or you can go back to Egypt. And when the children of Israel hit a hard space, they said, would to God, we had been left in Egypt. Why would you want to go back to slavery and bondage? Because it's familiar. Venturing out in the spirit and staying full of the Holy Ghost is new ground. But there's a land that flows with milk and honey. Hallelujah, where the blessing of the Lord is. And staying full of the Holy Ghost, maintaining your spiritual strength. You can leave Egypt behind forever and walk in that land of milk and honey where the, where the water, the ground waters itself. It drinketh of the dew of the, of the, it drinketh of the dew. The mountains, the water runs off the mountains and feeds the valleys. <clears throat> and they don't have to stand on treadmills and irrigate the land like they did in Egypt as slave labor. Why would you want to go back? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we knew we had a guy who was back in our church. He worked at a pizza place. And he always drank beer with his pizza. Well, somewhere down the road. He, they came up with, remember the, that term called near beer? It was like 0.5% alcohol. It was supposed to be non-alcoholic beer, but it really had 0.5%. Had so you know, really, really, really. He started drinking near beer. Of course, that didn't last long. Started drinking beer. Fell out of church. Stopped serving the Lord. Why? Because you enjoyed the taste of Egypt? What's in Egypt? What did Egypt ever give you? What did Egypt ever give you that would satisfy your soul? Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you that we can maintain our spiritual strength by staying full of the Holy Ghost. We thank you that your word is a living word and your spirit's a living spirit and working in our lives and in our hearts. We can walk with you in that place of fellowship where we are strengthened by the spirit in Jesus' name.